comments at this time?
one operation and then one that might uh, offer a possible solution. Um, one of the challenges is the street starts in the town, uh, which is outside, obviously, of our borders. Um, so anything that we do, we might not be able to get them to turn around. They might have to finish on down the street. Um, but to that end, um, the charter has emergency loading support in it. We haven't uh, used that uh, in this type of a situation, but that's something the council could consider, you know, which we allow for a quicker uh, solution and see if we could, you know, even an ordinance would allow the police department, the emergency ordinance would allow the police department to stop and in so doing have some conversations and learn what's driving it. Mm -hmm. I would say we could also, uh, I could get to the contacts within each business of the industrial park and Lila, because those are pretty much the primary and probably the co um, primary destinations. Mm -hmm. And we can ask them to get a letter out to all their carriers. But, okay. And there will be repercussions out the road in terms of volumes of tickets. You and I can work together on that. Because even an updated 24,000 pound sign doesn't mean anything. The same thing for our paper is 7,000 pounds. And I'm particularly nervous with if we're talking about the possibility of doing the sidewalks um, on Upper Wetland. Right. Having some of the street taken up by construction vehicles and then putting that tractor trailer truck down the street. I mean, I think they're going to not be able to get through, so we're going to back a, truck, a trailer up the street, right? It would be a mess. It would be a mess at the best. Um. The weight limit thing is, is, is tough. There's a whole body of case law in Vermont um, about what you have to do to issue tickets for that. And you've got to have scales. You give away on that. Um, um, but I think a simple you know, through trucks ordinance might be a lot simpler. Um, so, what's the I'm trying to rebuy what I understand? What's the council's um, preference on that? Do you want us to spend some thought into how an ordinance might work? Or do you want to look at some non-regulatory measures first? This my thought is if that sign isn't working, we need to take the next step to look at an ordinance of some sort. Uh, so we'll, uh, one tractor is really still off. I think we'll go about Concerns and it's 
not legal for him to be going down the street. No, just know that we're we're on the same page. And we'll try to come over. Because the speed limit is supposed to be 25, and that's a price. Especially morning and night when people are going to work. I mean, it's just a flash one. Mm -hmm. But nothing happens. Nobody catches them. They just keep going. Thank you for doing the homework, and we will, Kate will get back to you as, as we move forward. And if you can, not to give you more homework, but if you can continue to get truck names, if, you, if you're yeah, fortunate I, enough. Sometimes I can, sometimes yeah, I can. I mean, it depends where I'm outside. There's kind of a bump in the road, and like the air conditioner is going or something. I do that, bump so I know what trailers are going on. But you can track those uh, and share with Kate, and we appreciate it. Okay, you can do that. Yes. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Good floor. So you're going to work into it. Right, so you know what's going on. Absolutely, I will. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is number four, uh, a dog attack on Alder Street. Ben, you want to come forth and touch on that?
Thank you. Shelby, don't come forward. Do you have anything to share?
they're, they're at the city school. Every kid is walking up and down the street. And, you know, I know that you think the dogs are loyal. They're not. They're killers. They were bred to be killers. They fight. They, they catch pigs. They do what they got to do to... I'm not, I mean, I, I just think there's a, a, a place for them. In the city, in front of city school, is not the place. I, you know, they came over and killed that dog like it was a piece of meat and, I, you know, first of all, how do you tell that to, to the kids that raise that dog? We had that dog from a puppy. She said it's three pounds. It's not three pounds because it was a young dog by any means. It was just that's the size of a dog and it was just a, a fact of killing. You know, they were, they didn't stop when the dog squealed or, you know, I mean, or somebody ran out. They, they stopped because the thing was dead and it was gone squealing. When it's a kid that is coming down the road and that dog grabbed a hold of his head, I can tell you this, it will not be on my conscience, it will be on yours if you let these kid dogs in here. What happens? Okay, they got out the, the, the screen then. What happens when they get out the screen next time and it's a kid? I just don't, you know, it, it isn't, um, I've seen it before with other dogs. When I was younger, I thought, oh, it's real cool to have a pit bull. No, they're killers. They're, you know, it's, I knew that a, a fact when I had a son that we could not have one of those dogs around because of the fact that they shake them up, they get them screaming, and then they are just red-eyed from there. And whether or not that means a lot right now, I don't know, but that is my thought, and I'm at least going to voice that. Thank you. Tell me, Pounds. Okay. Last well, time, uh, this rock going to come on up. I think you need to sit. Do you have anything you want to share with us? Oh, I have a lot. Come on up. Can't believe it. 
And um, I actually have a, a chihuahua mix. Um, her, her mother was a purebred chihuahua. Um, her dad was a purebred dash hound, so she's like a chihuahua or whatever the heck they call it. And um, they get along great, they get along fine. I don't know what happened. I've got cats, I've got dogs. Um, I, I babysat my aunt's guinea pig, and they were great with the pig. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened, and I can't explain what happened. And I will never, never be able to forgive myself for what happened. But I did apologize, and I did drop to my knees, and I did say, I'm so sorry. And I really am. Um, yeah, sure, they bark. They're dogs! They bark when the bird goes by. They bark when the mailman walks by. They bark, you know what I mean? They bark at their own tail. They bark when the I mean, they, they, they bark. Yes, they bark. So, you know, when somebody's riding a bicycle down the street when I've got them tied up, do they bark? Sure they do. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, you know, this was a, an absolute accident. And this is my family. I have no children. They're my kids. This is my family. And I will never, never be able to replace their seven month old baby. And I can't imagine if a dog came into my yard. But I do know that I have two really great kids. And I don't know what happened this time. I really don't. I can't tell you. But I can promise you that it ain't gonna happen again. I can promise you that. And I do have a fencing yard. And yes, it is very secure. And I've been skeptical lately on putting them in there for different reasons. Um, but I do have a, a very great fenced in backyard. Um, and if they're not in the fence in backyard, then I do have one of those, um, we grow with horses. So it's uh, one of those blue and white uh, horse leads. And I went to co-op, and instead of like a cable or, or whatever, it's a, it's a blue and white, literally, horse tie um, that, that they're hooked up to when they go out to, to do their pee and poop. So they're inside dogs anyway. So they go in and out, do their thing, and come back in. Um, I just don't know what happened. I wish I wish I knew. And I want them to know that I, I really am so sorry. And I made sure, you know, to let Michelle know I was I was devastated. And if there's anything I could do, you know. Um, this has just never happened before. And I love cats and dogs. I just don't understand. So anyways. Thank you. Anyone else want to share? Anyone else have? I just can share the picture I showed you. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Bill. Bill, I'm Judy. I'm Judy. I'm Shelton. I, I just want to say this wasn't territorial where my dog went to their yard and it was territorial things. It wasn't. They went out and they killed that dog. And they will tell anything else that, that they feel like killing me. I mean, period. There's two of them, and then they're something apart. Bottom line. So the way we're going to leave this is we, uh, we will deliberate on this and uh, make a decision. And then you will be, both parties will be informed of what that decision is. Um, I would, uh, we've, we've had these hearings before. I know all dog owners take ownership like you have, so I, I would commend you for, for taking that ownership in this. I have so much more pictures, too, of, of where I went out and got collars, too, of where they're not just their normal collars. They're like a pinch collar, too, so that there's no more tugging. So there's there's the collars that's new. There's, there's a leash that's new. There's so many new things to make sure that this doesn't happen again because this is tragic. I love animals. They are my life. I would jump in front of a vehicle for my animal. I jumped from a vehicle for my kids. And so I just, I, I literally, when I saw their dog, I literally, I dropped to my knees and held their dog. It was, I was devastated. 
And so I've done so many different things since then. I also have photos of how I've reinsured that they cannot get out through that that door anymore. It, I've got I've got um, wooden. There's so many photos. Anyways, I spoke to the officer yesterday, and she said that if they wanted to stop by uh, at any point in time, um, the animal control officer. Um, and, and take photos that he was more than welcome to, if you guys would, would like that. Um, and I was more than welcome to, to oblige to that um, for the, the photos of, of the different um, tie-outs that are new, um, the leashes and collars that are new, um, the way that the doors now are now so that they can't get through that screen and it's completely closed now, um, and the other ones, how they're reimbursed so they can't get through, and how the backyard is secure and um, there's there's no issue as long as nothing is put into their area that will make an issue. Mr. Mayor, yes. just, uh, could you explain to the council what you have done to reinforce that door exactly? Or... I've got photos. Do you want to see pictures? No, just, just describe it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, pictures are crazy. I, 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 want, I want photos. <laughs> okay. Tell us what no, it's doing. okay. I want a picture crazy. Um, so it's a sliding glass door, and it's actually. Um, well, it's not my favorite because it just got the best breeze. Um, but so what it was was it was a sliding glass door, and um, they never I just, like I said I don't understand. So anyways, with the screen. But the thing is, is I went and spent even an extra little bit to make it a little bit more reinforced. Just that it wasn't just a normal screen; it was like an extra little bit of a metal screen so that cats couldn't get through it or whatever the stray cats. So anyways, regardless. Um, and, and so what had happened was they had, I don't know, chipmunk or whatever, had, and they got through the bottom, bottom left-hand corner. And so what had happened was, what I do now is instead of having it open at all, which I don't, it is completely closed. And like I said, I've got plenty of photos if you want to see. There's a, um, I've got a, um, a, a wooden, um, there's a, a wooden pole at the top, also for my safety so that nobody can break in. There's a wooden pole at the top of the door and also at the bottom, um, so that there's no way that anybody can break in and and do anything. Yeah, but yeah. They can't. So I take it this sliding door, screen door, glass door, it, uh, um, is is not fenced in at all, and um, that goes out into the street. No, door. that is not. That part is absolutely not. You're absolutely correct. That part is not. That door has never even used other than the screen door. You don't yeah. even use it to go in and out. So you're saying you're going to keep it closed and locked. You're not going to use it as a screen door. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so as I mentioned, we'll uh, deliberate on this and we'll submit a letter from, to both parties and we'll <coughs> know what the discussion was and what we decided. Okay. And make sure that they know that at any point in time. He's more than welcome to just stop by the house as the officer stated yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you both parties for coming in. Appreciate it. Um, so Dominic, we'll turn it over to you. We're hearing item number five, public works, correctly. Thank you. Uh, next item, uh, thank you again, give me the opportunity to uh, request your concurrence with the uh, one of the public works director. Uh, my pleasure to recommend Matt Mahanimal. That's resume is in your uh, packet. I think it's in the packet as well. Uh, for the last 18 years, Matt's worked uh, for the city. Uh, he started as a laborer, steadily achieved more and more leadership and management responsibilities. Uh, within public works, he rose to the positions of chief water, water operator and superintendent of public works for a combined total of seven years in those positions. Both of those positions are direct reports to directors. In 2012, uh, he joined the fire department and was instrumental in rebuilding our fire department. Uh, in this role, he brought in his managerial experience and brought, brought into regular contact with the leadership team at City Hall. He also served as the city's chief building inspector, where he developed conflict resolution skills and inspired confidence with his ability to use common sense to solve tough regulatory problems. Uh, it's rare to be able to uh, hire a department head with as much experience in the organization uh, that Matt has and the experience is as broad and deep as Matt's. In the interviews, it was really clear that uh, this is a position Matt had been steering his career towards for quite some time. And I believe he has a unique combination of hands-on skills, leadership and management skills that allows one to be 
successful as a public works director. So to this end, I respectfully request the council to approve the appointment of Matt Mulherin as the director of public works. So we're going to entertain a motion to that effect. We move to uh, approve, uh, to authorize the, we were supposed to authorize you to appoint the this motion. Yeah, that works. I move to authorize the city manager to appoint Matt Mulherin as the public works Seconded by Marie. Any discussion? When do we get rid of that other guy? <laughs> 31st. <laughs> uh, the 31st is uh, now the party, and we'll, we'll have an advertisement in the messenger soon. Um, but we're going to have a cookout down at the, uh, the garage. It starts at 4 o'clock. Um, I think you know. Um, I think you know the council's position on Alan's service and. Make it, uh, say that we, uh, We're going to throw a party in spite of that, too. <laughs> 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 Alan has been a great addition to the city of St. Albans for four plus decades, and um, we know that will do a wonderful job, but Alan will be severely missed. Absolutely. So, uh, all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank okay. you. Next up uh, is a request uh, to authorize the city manager to sign the loan documents for back in town I ask the motion to be amended if the city manager or designee um, will uh, execute this uh, at a closing tomorrow. I move that we authorize the city manager or designee to sign the loan documents for back in town in. Second by James. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Moving on, on to number seven, public hearing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Community development program planning grant. That would be Chip Sawyer. I'm joined by uh, Heather Garso of Almond Blossom Schoolhouse. We are, um, applying for Vermont Community Development Program grant, uh, planning grants to uh, put together all the uh, designs, plans, um, studies, and other uh, materials necessary to uh, purchase the building at 233, 235 Lake Street, fit it up for an expanded schoolhouse, uh, which would be a preschool primarily slash daycare that would utilize the entire uh, historic building. Um, the plan grant would also put together um, other things necessary to fulfill any future federal grants to, um, to help with the purchase, the construction, and everything else associated with the uh, preschool. It would be up to $60,000. And uh, in terms of the grants, there would be match. Um, and um, yeah, the uh, rest of the details are in the memo and in the warning for the hearing. And this is a required public hearing? This is a required public hearing. Just like last year, last month, the other one. Anyone have any questions? Heather or Chip? I would say uh, I think it's great that we're accessing the DCDP program for child care opportunities. Um, as far as economic development goes, it's a it's a uh, it's a void in the system, uh, at least locally. And, and I understand you're doing multiple shifts, right? Yes. So our goal is to open um, be open 24 hours a day, which would help with the second and third shift workers. Um, if we got the funds that we are requesting um, throughout the process, we would be able to have 100 kids out of the program at a time, which would put us in significant debt in the need of the area. The need is great, that's for sure. What does that do? Uh, and this is more of a development review discussion, I guess, board review, but um, parking coming and going. Um, the, um, the use has a uh, conditional use approval from the DRB already. Um, we may or may not have to update that back to the DRB depending on how many children, I forget how many children were 
We've been approved up to 60, which is the full restoration of the current building. Um, the additional 40 would be if we recap the garage. Any other questions? Uh, how about any comments from the general public out there? With all that. I have a question. question. I have a question. Who pays the match? Is it the city or is it Scarsdale's business that pays the matching funds for the planning plan? Um, I think it's NRPD. The NRPC is helping with, with the grant. Um, I believe the, uh, the rest of the match would come from the daycare business. Okay. The cash, cash match. Yes. So is there is there an incline match with administrative help from? Yes. Some of the city city staff time and NRPC staff time can be tracked as incline match. Excellent idea. I do have a business plan with our mission statement and everything. If anyone is interested, and your timing for this, can you give us a quick timeline of how you see this unfolding? Um, we are hoping to open within the next month with 12 children, and by November with 30, um, and then the when the development grant comes through, which would be. Next November, November, is that right? The, um, yeah, this planning grant to early next month, board meeting it, 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 and in Montpelier is in November. Hopefully, we get awarded. If, if it's awarded, all, most of the planning activities would happen next year. And then once that is done, uh, depending on the timing, um, on the block, we can go back before the state for an implementation grant or pursue other funding opportunities. A lot of it depends upon when the planning is done and then the, the timing of the due dates and board meetings or any other federal source to do the actual purchase and construction. Okay. So there's a motion, right? I believe we have a motion. Right. Yeah. 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 Just stop the hearing, so that's next. Questions for Chip? I'll move that we adopt the LEOD as presented. Second. 
Any other comments? Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I was actually not the labor, but I was surprised how many daycares there were in the meeting. Yeah, I didn't know there was that many. Yeah, I thought we just said we had a child care problem. I know. That's, no, 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 I want to wait for that or that. <laughs> We, uh, I will say, we, we are more apt to add them than remove the ones that might not exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So might not yeah. exist, yeah. Right. But uh, there, is, there is still a child care gap because many places don't make any sense with these kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Moving on. Um, the revolving loan fund for uh, lower wealth. Tom? Yes. How are you tonight? Very good. Okay. This is a request for council approval to apply for uh, 57300 from the state revolving loan fund. Um, this would be for engineering for the stormwater work as part of the lower level in CSL. This specific section would be the Stenton Street section. Um, it's a competitive uh, pool of funds we'd be going after. If awarded, it would be a 50% grant, 50% loan. So even though it says 57 three, it's really deaf of that. Um, even though it's competitive, the, these are the same folks that are funding about $6 million of the wastewater plant. Uh, they know the team here. They know that the funds will be administered correctly. Um, they also know that the council and the voters have done an awful lot to uh, upgrade the infrastructure throughout the city. And they like to fund programs where the study's not going to sit on the shelf, but the engineering to be included in the fiscal work on the ground will be done. So we feel like we've got a big leg up and actually getting the funds. Um, so we're seeing the council approval of the whatever the kind of change. What are the terms? Um, typically five years at a match rate of 2%, uh, but oftentimes zero. We don't always get those exact specifics until the funds are awarded. But I'm very competitive. Is this also considered, this isn't the drinking water fund? This is, um, it's a state of uh, clean water and water loan fund, um, which funds water, wastewater, stormwater projects. Um, there's some other things that we want to apply for in the past. What's that? Perhaps some other things they haven't applied for, but we use it for water, wastewater, and that stormwater. A motion to authorize. Uh, yep, the signatures in the back, so I can pass it around. Okay. Entertain a motion to uh, authorize the application. So moved. I'll second. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Yeah. 
there's a lot going on. I think the hospital is doing one this week, maybe or did one already. Uh, People's Trust is doing one. So for us to get reach that goal, we worked hard to do it. But we also promoted the downtown, which was a Marty even comment on, but I think it was a huge success relative to. Uh, no question. Again, we put it out to the merchants, and without hesitation, we had five or six step up and donate yes. items. So the other piece I would share is Marty's uh, uh, and the merchant group has gone out found milk cans to be painted in honor of the co-op's hundreds. Um, uh, they'll be painted and displayed throughout uh, the downtown area. And how we how we auction those off or wrap them off, which we haven't really decided yet, but it's sort of a, a little bit of a spin off the chair affair. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, along with the photos that from the photo competition will be on display here at Hope for the next two weeks. So, it's a lot of good stuff going on. And, uh, so, anyone, if anyone else has anything you want to share? Michael? Like, well, while you're doing the love fest, Kelly reminded you that Molly and I had a really good time at the pirate party, and I just wanted to say that the staff that, that you have, they're just so good with kids. I mean, just they're just incredible. They just make sure that all the kids are having a good time. And, um, and that they're safe, and I just I really appreciate everything you guys are doing with the bullets. Thanks, it's they, just awesome. they are super, and that's that's nice to hear. Can I apologize? I didn't see you behind the shell all the time. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, she's smoking. But like, uh, Kelly had down here before 350 kids attended that event. Yeah, or yeah. individuals, which is unbelievable. What's the capacity of the pool? Well, right, in, in the water, yeah, uh, in the water we try to keep it under 200, but it depends how hot it is. There were plenty of people playing games from the river. Yes, yes, we were all over the place, right? I don't believe that we were in. <laughs> no, but to, to just echo what you said, too, not only does downtown look amazing, there are a lot of great things going on, too, so, you know, the concerts in the park, the things that the rec department puts on. I was talking to somebody at the pool party who said, you know, they were from Milton, and she said, we come up, we come to every event the rec department goes to. We come up all the time, but we have nothing like this. So, yeah. I was like, that's awesome. So, it really is, we're drawing proud. The city has really come alive in the past yes. just a few years. And um, it's, a, it's a good guy. I hear comments all the time at work. And again, that echo what you were saying, people from out of town come. And they're always commenting on how one of these places is. So I think everybody, I think it's a real team effort, and everybody needs to be commended because it's really a nice, nice place to live. James, I No, just I'm glad to be back there. Sorry, I no, missed back. I missed four months uh, uh, with these medical issues I had, and I both went back to study. So to that point, I talked to Dom, and uh, we will be paying you for those four months. Thank you. Thank you. That was a pretty deal. Okay. That was not that was very generous decision. <laughs> um, I have one quick question uh, for Chip. Actually, uh, has there uh, is there any um, announcement or news that's fit to share about the grant applications for uh, the auditorium? Or is that for future? Oh, yeah, no, no, that's, uh, that's public. We, um, we received $22,000 from the Arts, Vermont Arts Council and, and State of Vermont's Cultural Facilities Grant. So that paired with the 15000 from the National Life Foundation and the Vermont Community Foundation. We have, um, so we have $37,000 in grant money for lights, sound, curtains. We're gonna to put together a team of folks to prioritize the improvements and and uh, get it done. Cool. And we'll, and we'll bring it up to the downtown board next week because they've been part of the leadership behind it. Excellent, that's great news. Tom, do you want, you're good? You're good. <laughs> Thanks, um, so we have um, probably two more things on our agenda. One is, um, we want to appoint uh, Liz Gamash, the creative economy in the zone. And we understand a motion to do that. I would move that we appoint Liz Gamash as the creative economy in the zone. This is something she's interested in. 
I assume. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 